We're having problems with it too. Yeah. You got it. You got it started in time. Yeah. My questionable play on first base. You had that on camera. Because coach called my assigner. Oh. And was complaining about it. Yeah. And he said, Well, yeah, she never got in the runner's lane. She stayed in her territory. And she got hit with the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, she's out, not running in her lane. That's why they got that double lane up there. And if you get to that double lane, you got to get into foul territory. I used to ump softball. I don't think I ever had a call like that. I only did it for a summer. Yep. I thought he was complaining too much. So. Yeah. He said she was in foul ball territory all the way. No, she wasn't, though. And thankfully, you had that on film. So <laughs> Yeah. So it backed up my, my call. <laughs> I don't think there was any other complaints the rest of the game, just that call. So. No, just that one. Yeah. Good thing we got that started in time.
coming off of a sweep of Hastings College yesterday. 15 to four and nine to zero in the first game. Let's get your starting lineups on this wonderful day. Batting first for your Lancers, Abby Johnson playing shortstop. Batting second, Ella Ray playing right field. Batting third for your Lancers, Adam Porter playing center field. Fourth, Olivia Valdez playing third base. Fifth, Reese Peterson left field. Sixth, Brooklyn Townsend, the hometown hero, playing against the left player. Batting eighth, Michaela Hudson in the catcher position. Ninth is Reagan Harper. Playing second base. Your pitcher, Mackenzie Gray, taking to the mound now. We'll read the Dakota State lineups at the half. Aubrey, if that first pitch is going to strike, fire. After that sweep yesterday, MMU improved to 12 and 16 on the season. Throw the ball. Count as 2-1 now. Fouled off. 2-2 Raise delivery. Move the ball. Full count now. Like I said, beautiful day here at Servitol.
Dakota State University, Aaron Skinner, assistant coach. Corey Morgan, as that ball is fouled off. Coming into today's contest, Dakota State is 5 20 overall. As that is a swing by the umpire. 2 2 the count now. 1 2 the count, actually. Yeah, on the season so far, as that is a steal attempt. Safe at second base. Second. But yeah, as I was saying, Dakota State coming into this contest 5 and 20 on the year, 0 oh and 7 away from home. So this will be a challenge for them as that ball is fouled out, right? Neutral sites, they're 3 and 11, and the conference play, they're 2 and 10. That ball is fouled off. Delivery. Swung on. Hit to the shortstop, and that is a 6 3 out. I just like a little correction. This is not a conference matchup. This is a North Star Conference versus Great Plains Athletic Conference matchup. Delivery right down the middle strike. As number 42 is up to bat, that is checked. But it's a strike, it seems. Umpire's asking. She says, he says safe. One and one count now. Up to bat, Michelle Evdos. That's a walk. count now for Evdos. Gray's delivery. Fouled off. Fouled off. 
ball by the umpire. Two two count now. Fouled off. Still two two here. Put into play to the shortstop. That's it out at third base. And that'll be a fielder's choice. Now up to bat for the state. Gabriel Ortega Alves. Well, the season so far, she's middle of the back in terms of the good state batting average is 21-2. 19 games played, 11 started. That first pitch is really straight. A look at her season so far. She has one run scored, seven hits, one double, seven RBI in the season. Delivery. Rule the ball. One one now. Swung on up to back to the pitcher. That'll be a one three out to end the inning. Yeah. Do up for Mount Marty in the bottom half of the first. Abby Johnson, Ella Ray, and Autumn Porter. Johnson yesterday had two home runs on the day, as well as Michaela Hudson. So, looking to continue that hot streak. Some scores for you from yesterday's softball action. No! Northern, Northwestern defeated Grandview 9 to 1. As we know, Mount Marty blanked Hastings College 8 0 in the first game. Dakota Wesleyan defeated Briarcliff 5 4. Doan defeated 10. College St. Mary 10 1. Jamestown bested Valley City State 10 1. Northwestern in the second game over Grandview defeated them 2 0. South Dakota State beat Northwestern in baseball 8 1. Dort defeated Dakota Wesleyan 8 9 8. Mount Marty picked up a crucial victory in baseball as well yesterday, 15-4 up the morning side. Again yesterday also, Mount Marty bested Hastings College 13-5. The second game between Dakota Wesley and Briar Cliff. Briar Cliff defeated Dakota Wesley in 11-5. Dorton took game two for the sweep, 12-8. Jamestown swept Valley City State 3-2. Bellevue took Took a game against Midland, 13 to 10 in baseball. So Wesley and Dorton, 4 to 3 in baseball. And Morningside took game two of the doubleheader against Mount Marty, 7 to 4 yesterday. As Johnson comes up to bat here, I'll read you off the Dakota State University lineup. Batting first, Hannah McFarland playing center field. Ali Morsey playing left field, followed by Michelle Evidence playing catcher, as that ball is called strike. Rosie Phillip playing first base. Gabriel Ortega Alves playing right field. Delaney Barrett playing pitcher. That second delivery is called ball, 1-1 one, one now. Quincy Hartley playing shortstop, batting seventh. Batting eight, Torrance Cloen playing third base and batting ninth, Jordan Jeffries playing second base. As that ball is ruled a ball, makes the count 2 1 now.
swung on by Johnson, and that'll be an that'll be a single. That ball is bottled. That's going to be an error on the left fielder. And that'll be she's going for three. Slides in. She has three on the air. That's a leadoff triple for Abby Johnson. Again, Delaney Barrett playing the flex role today. She'll be pitcher, pitching and hitting today. Barrett's delivery. As Ella Ray looks to bunt on that. Barrett's delivery. Rule the ball. And that's going to throw back to the third baseman. will be over her head, and Johnson will score from third base off of the error. That's now two errors early on for Dakota State. One on the left fielder and one on the catcher after the throwback to third base goes over her head. Again, up to bat still, Ella Ray. Two balls, no strikes. Count. Mount Marty takes a 1 0 lead early on here. Barrett's delivery. Called a strike. 2 1 now. Bunch attempt, it's called a strike. 2-2 two, two the count now. Some stats for you on the season for Ella Ray. 1-9-0 is the batting average for her. Is that ball is going to play the pitcher and that'll be a quick 1-3 out. Now to bat, the center fielder, Autumn Porter. <laughs> Having the best season so far for Lenny Lancer in the lineup. She's batting 393 after 28 games played and started. As the first delivery is a dual strike. On the season, she has four home runs, three triples, five doubles, 35 hits total. 23 runs scored for her as well, 89 at bats. As the second delivery is popped up into the infield, that might fall, and it does. And that'll be a speed off single for her. Start the day. Now batting Liv Valdez. Delivery. Pop! Outfield. Caught by the center fielder. On the first pitch swing. Good rip, Liv. Now to bat Reese Peterson. <laughs> Called a strike by the umpire. <laughs> Two outs on the inning for the Lancers, one runner on first base. Is that one sails wide for a ball? That ball is fouled off. Just down the left field line. Luke Valdez steps back into the box. 
Checked. Now we will the ball. 2-2 two, two now. <laughs> Barrett's delivery. Runner tries to steal second and she will get there. And she, second baseman tried to scoop it, drops it, and Porter will advance to third base off of the error by the second baseman. That's three errors early on by Dakota State. One by the left fielder, one by the catcher, and now one by the second baseman. The three, two. Inside for a ball. Oh, and it will go back. Catcher didn't catch it. And that'll be another run scored by Mount Marty as she tries for two, and she'll make it to second base. Off of a walk and a wild pitch. Another error by to go to state as a mountain visit occurs early on. So weather for you in Saratoga Park, a little breezy today. But it is warm today. 67 degrees. 17 mile hour per winds out of the northwest, 25 mile per hour gusts. So, hopefully, we'll see some more home runs today for the Lancers. Something we don't want to see on the weather report today, though, a red flag warning all the way until Thursday. So, watch out for that. Lancers lead 2 0, bottom of the first. Runner on second base. Delivery. It's called a ball. Delivery. Popped into the infield, and that'll probably get down. Caught by the right fielder. Looked like it might have snuck. Might have almost fell to the ground. Right fielder caught the ball diving. Lancers lead 2 0 at the bottom of the first. You're listening. Or check that. Watching the Mount Marty Sports Network. Stay tuned. Now 
off the bat for go to State, Quincy Hartley. Call a strike by the umpire. Hartley on the season. Deuces across the board. Oh, zeros across the board. As she fouls that one back. So no hits on the season. And six at bats so far. Six games played. So it looks like she's getting her first start on the season today. Foul of that. Swung on to the third baseman. Five. Clellan, as that one was ruled a ball. Time. So this will be a quick update from her stats on Janaea. Batting at 23-5 on the season, 24 games played, 24 started. 
delivering by Barrett. The ball. Castro on the season. 12 runs scored. One double, one home run. Nine RBI. That is fouled off. <coughs> Two one the count now. Swung on to the second baseman, 4-3. One out on the inning now for the Lancers. <laughs> Kayla Hudson now up to bat for the Lancers. Pitches will the ball by Barracks. <coughs> Swung on and fouled off. One on the count. Kayla Hudson yesterday knocked in two, knocked out two home runs in game one and two yesterday against Hastings College. One each. Practicing her swing already to hit another one out of the park. Winds calm down for a second. It's a good time to hit one out of the park if she does. Fouled off. Three two. Down. Delivery. Will the ball. She won't smack one out of the park this time, but she'll get on base for a walk. by the third baseman and she's safe at first base. All speed there from number 18. Olivia Valdez. Correction on that one actually. Reagan Harper on the bunch of tennis. Now up to bat, the other <coughs> Lancer that smacked out a few home runs yesterday, Abby Johnson, as the pitch runner comes in for Michaela Hudson. Number six for the Lancer. Michaela Gronk. I believe that changes, I will let you know. Looks to be Michaela Gromke on second base. Runners on first and second.
Hey, it's Luther. Move the ball. Swung on, fouled off. Oh, Yes, according to my sheet here, it is Michaela Gronke on second base. Delivery. Fouled and popped up, out of play. Full count for Johnson here. Runners on first and second. Caught a ball, and that'll be bases loaded for the Lancers with one out on the inning, so they can definitely get one. In there. Bryant talking to the umpire here. Looks like a substitution is going to be made. Twenty-five is pinch hitting for fourteen. So. <laughs> Ella McNew up to pinch hit for the Lancers. <laughs> Quick update for you on McNew's season so far. She has a 25 even batting average as this delivery is ruled a hit by pitch, actually. Bounced just off her elbow. It's a one run will score for the Lancers. As I was saying, Ella McNew has a 25 batting average on the season. 13 games played, only two started though. Good numbers for the freshman. As Autumn Porter comes up to bat now. The danger man for the Lancer lineup here. As I said, she's batting a 3 9 3 to start this season. So a grand slam could be on the cards. With only one out on the inning. Third slivery. Just outside for a ball. Put into play, and that'll sneak past the shortstop, and that'll be two runs scored by the Lancers. Maybe three. As they score three runs in that ball. And that's a triple for Autumn Porter. Three RBI off of that. Ball is thrown to the third baseman. As she came cruising through and hit the base. Almost went out of play. Lancers ups. 
six zero early on in the bottom of the second. As the players huddle up here in the center circle, and Ramon Romero is coaching up Liv Valdez. Replacement on the mound for the state. Now pitching for them, Mason Usselman on the season so far. She's given up nine runs through 6.1 innings of play. 14 3 7 ERA. Four walks, four strikeouts. Three doubles given up in one home run. I saw that. Usselman hopes to turn in a good performance here. Coming in to relief for Barrett. You're watching this double header of Dakota State versus Mount Marty. Uh, North Star Athletic Association showdown versus the GPAC Conference. As Usselman gets ready to throw the first pitch of her relief effort. Delivery. Called a strike by the umpire. Good start. Base is empty. Scratch that. Autumn Porter tripled earlier, so she hits that into the left field gap, and that'll be one run scored for Mount Marty. 7 0, bottom of the second. Autumn Porter comes in to score after her triple. Now up to bat, Reese Peterson. Is that first delivery is called strike? <laughs> Swung on, hit to the shortstop. That might be two outs for Dakota. Safe at first base on the fielder's choice. Reese Peterson beat out to the throw from second base, so only one out on the inning, one out in that play. Now up to bat for the Lancers. Brooklyn Townsend, the hometown hero, has that first delivery by Usselman called a ball. Runner on first base, two outs at the bottom of the second. Inside, ball two. <laughs> Delivery by Usselman. 3-0 the count now. Runners on first and second here now that really Noah Dehe comes up to bat. Dehe on the season has a 23 1 batting average as Caleb Bryant tosses the umpire. Don't. Are you First 
pitch for Usselman against Nihi is called a strike. Way outside, ball two. Counts, two one. Runners on first and second, two outs on the inning for now. Swung on, hit to the shortstop, and that'll fall through her hands. And that'll be another run scored for the Lancers off of the shortstop's error. Quickly, 8 0 here in the bottom of the second. Runners on first and third now as Michaela Hudson comes back up to bat. This is definitely rising. Again, yesterday. In two games, she smacked out two home runs. Game one, one home run, and game two, another. Delivery by Usselman. Called a strike. Musselman's delivery into the dirt. Quickly gathered up by the catcher though. The pitcher had home plate covered in case Brooklyn Townsend decided to come home from third. 2-2 Two -two now the count. Would like to say Lily Noaniki did advance from first to second off of that wild pitch. So runners on first, for second and third for the Lancers as that is set to third base. 3-1 as Townsend will get to home plate, but it won't count. 8-0, your Lancers lead. You're, listening, you're watching Mount Marty Sports Network.
that looks to be all of the substitutions. Uh, that first delivery is called a strike. For Jordan Jeffries, third best hitter so far on, for Dakota State on the season as this delivery is inside the party ball. Correction, called a strike by the umpire. 0 2 the count now. Has 29 2 average. That ball is fouled off. So far in the season, 22 games started, 24 played. As that ball is promptly fouled off. Nineteen hits on the season for Jeffries. Six doubles, one triple, twelve RBI. So a solid season so far. Is that ball swung on and missed for the strikeout? Now up to bat, top of the lineup for Dakota State, Hannah McFarland. Most dangerous hitter here on Dakota State's lineup. Again, she has a 41-4 average coming into today's game. Seven doubles on the season for her, but no home runs or triples. That's after 70 at-bats. Swung on, hit to the third baseman. Caught by Nihu at first base, and that'll be a 5-3 play. Cleanup spot now for Dakota State. Allie Mercey. Moresi. As Gray pitches, it'll be fouled off. Looked like a swinging bunt attempt for it. Too high, ball one. One one the count now. That ball has popped up into the infield. That'll be caught by the second baseman. That'll end the inning for the Lancers. Lancers lead 8-0 after the top of the third. Again, it is Youth Day here at Saratoma Field. Early on in the uh, presentation of the pregame festivities we had a we had the Lancers lead out some of the youth here today as they stood for the national anthem and the Mount Martin Prayer. Double header here for Kirk State and Mount Martin. Again, Kirk State is 5-20 on the season while Mount Marty is 3 2 Thirteen. Uh, Twelve and six. Uh, as uh, Megan Topovich comes to bat. Popovich on the season so far has a 3-1-6 on the season. 19 games played, three started. So looking to get some valuable minutes here. Temperatures 
starting to drop here at Saratoga Field as the wind picks up. A one, one of the count. Bressy is back out here for another inning. Oh no! Hit it the play to the shortstop, and that'll be a 6 3 out. Now up to bat, Abby Johnson. And during today's game, she had 25 7 average on the <laughs> As she looks at the delivery here, and that is popped up into right field, and that'll be caught by the right fielder after a one pitch at bat for Now to bat, Ella McNew, the freshman from Omaha, Nebraska. Hustleman's delivery. Called a ball. Ellen McNew comes up to bat. Two outs. Inning for the Lancers. Outside, ball two. If McNew gets on base here, following her up to bat will be Sammy Noble. That ball has popped into play. Caught by the shortstop, and that'll end the inning. Entering the fourth inning of play, we have 8 0 ball game. We'll take a short break. You're watching the Mount Marty Sports Network. so far statistically for the Lancers. Yes, has a 3-1-0 earned run average, but no wins or losses on the season with 11 appearances. So a great reliever for the Lancers out there. This is for 20 innings of the work. Really? delivery. Fouled off. Fouled. It's actually in play to the third baseman, and that'll be a 5-3. Oh. 
looked like it might have snuck just past the left field line, but it stayed fair. A lot of substitutions here for the Lancers as Elizabeth McGill is playing third base and Abby Johnson is playing shortstop now. With the score 8-0, it looks like the coach wants to get some practice in with some players here. Changing positions are a few. Adds a strike right down the middle. That ball had some spin on it. That ball has popped and fouled off. Oh, The delivery swung on and fouled off. Gabriel Ortega Valdez. Alves is up to bat. Quickly in an 0-2 hole for Dakota State. Swung on to the third baseman. Should be a 3-1 play. As Nifi makes the grab at first base and she showed the umpire to make sure she got the call. Quick inning for the Lancers. <laughs> Heading to the top of the fifth now. Fast moving game. Still out here on the ground. Looking to continue to keep the score where it is. game, they will do just that. Ball is caught by the center fielder. Now up to bat, number five, Elizabeth McGill. <laughs> right down the middle of the straight. Simmons delivery. Up and in. That'll be a ball. Low. Two one down the count. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. A ball. 
Swung on to the short stop. Six three. Now to bat for the party. Number 31, Kaylee oh, Jacinto. 27, one average here. That's that first delivery by also the ball. Oh, oh, Pitch. Called it strike by the umpire. One more. Oh, good luck. Ball is swung on oh, to the ball of the second baseman, and that'll be a full three. To end the inning, the wind is picking up now at Saratoga Field. a ball for the umpire. Quickly restarts proceedings here. Swung on and missed and that'll be a strikeout for Kovar. Still looking 
for her first hit on the season. That is ruled a strike. Deal one. Outside. Too high. Won the count now. Swung on and miss. Two two now. Swung on. That'll end the inning. In the top half of the inning. You're watching Mount Marty Sports Network. We'll take a quick break here. That'll be a run rule. As we come back here, 8 0, the final score is. Mount Marty takes game one. We'll wait for the second game lineups. You are watching Mount Marty Sports Network. Please stay tuned for game two.
Am I on your way right here? No, you're good. All good. Given up 44 runs scored on her and 35 earned runs. 23 strikeouts though for her as starting leading off for Dakota State. Hannah McFarland in game two. First delivery for Gronke is called a ball. As I said, a completely changed Lancer lineup for game two. First game ended in an 8-0 shutout for Mount Marty after five innings of play. This continue out, continues on their shutout streak that they've had, which now extends to three games. They look to make it four if they win this one. And that's a walk for Gronky to start the game. Four pitches, four balls. Game two is a little windier than the first. Storm might blow in, as I said in game one. Some dark clouds descending from the northwest. As the delivery from Gronky bounces out of the catcher's glove at the runner from first base. Yeah. One ball, no strikes. As coming to bat now for Dakota State. Is Gabriel Ortega Alves. That first delivery was ruled a ball. Dakota 
Cook State record as that ball is set to the shortstop, and that'll be a 6 3 play. Now to bat for the Trojans. Number three, Jaden Brown. basement and that is a 5-3 play. No, it won't be. Liliana, Liliano and Nihi extended out for that one. Looked like it was going to stay in her glove, but it just popped out. So that is an error on the first basement. And it'll extend the inning. Now batting for the Trojans, Delaney Granger. Ronke's delivery, called it strike right down the middle. <laughs> Popped up, foul. Tree branch or two might have been harmed in that foul. Off. Oh, two count. Delivery. Swung on and missed. And that'll end the top of the first for Trojans. Trojans lead 1 0 for Mount Marty. Your home team's coming to bat. Bottom of the first. We'll be right back. So far, statistically, for the Trojans on the season. 
one two overall record, three six seven ERA. Primarily a reliever, as she has ten appearances this season with three games started. Make that four today. She has turned 21 innings of work, 28 hits given up, 20 runs given up, 11 earned runs, 16 walks, 10 strikeouts. Across the season so far, four doubles given up, one triple given up, and one home run. As Jacinto takes strike one down the middle of the plate. Brown's delivery, swung on, popped, it might fall. No, it goes to the left fielder, and that'll be out number one for the Lancers. Now up to bat, Megan Toplovich. I felt a raindrop from the sky. Looks like we might be having some rain here. <laughs> Topovich reaches base. Off of the hit by pinch, it looks like. Couldn't quite tell there. Up to bat now, Adrian Scooby. Yes, it looks like it might rain here. So I might have to protect the equipment. Or I might not. I do have a canopy overhead, so I might be okay. Who knows? I'll find out from my supervisor if need be. Quickly a 2-0 count for Scooby. Swung on and missed. Runner on first base. is for sure starting to sprinkle here at Saratoma Field. I can feel the rain drops now as that's popped up and fouled back. Umpire hands the ball to the catcher and the catcher gets it to Brown. And it is a 2-2 count. Delivery, outside, full count. Currently sitting out in center field, I see a rainbow. That's a nice sight to see, even if it is a little chilly now here. Scooby is walked, and now there are runners on first and second as Elizabeth McGill comes up to bat. Seeing that rainbow in center field, it might be some good luck for the Lancers. They might hit a home run out of the park in center field. You never know. Delivery. With the ball, but for Brown. It is always a nice sight to see when you see a rainbow, though. I like to see it. As the runner goes from second, and she's tagged out at third. But the runner from first advances to second. One out on the inning right now for the Lancers. Count is currently 2-0. Right now, actually, there is a double rainbow now taking stage here in center field. As the rain starts to come down just a little bit. The ball is just no strikes. Blueberry. McGill has walked. 
that'll be runners on first and second. As Kaylee McDace comes up to bat now for the Lancers. Ball. Two outs on the inning, runners on first and second for the Lancers. Down the middle, strike. It. That'll be two runs scored for the Lancers. Runner going from second to third, and that'll be two runs runs scored. Lancers take a two-one lead here. That'll be a leadoff triple for the catcher here, Kaylee McNeese. Yes. So the weather report. It looks sunny, but. Rain's starting to come in and it's certainly getting cold here. 64 degrees, but the uh, real feel right now is still 62 degrees, which is surprising because it feels a lot colder with the wind. A couple people are leaving the park early. Can't say I blame them. Again, it's youth day here at Saratoga Field. Lancer softball team. Giving hope to the future of Yankton. Maybe a few Lancers here today. Future Lancers. A couple autographs given out as they cheer on their softball team. That hits the that hits the hometown hero from the Townsend and the bases are currently occupied at first and third off of the hit by pitch. Now to bat Sammy Noble. With that rain, it is getting cold out here as the as there's a meeting at the pitcher's mound. I know I keep emphasizing the weather, but it is certainly getting cold out here right now. <laughs> As the umpire tells one of the crowd members, where's this weather blowing in from, Canada? It's certainly getting cold out here. As I imagine, it is cold right now in Canada. Here is a cool weather report for you for uh, Toronto, Canada, why not? As we wait for the meeting at the Pitcher's Mound to get over. Right now it's 50 degrees in Toronto, Canada, so. Almost as warm here as it is in Canada. As that first ball is ruled a strike. Brown has the 0 1 count here. Looks to be a quick moving bout of weather, though, so. Hopefully it'll warm up again. But you never know with this win. Brooklyn Townsend occupies first, and the catcher Kaylee McNeese occupies third. So that ball is too low. Two on the count. Pitch is ruled a ball and that'll make it 3 1. Again, Sammy Noble up in the box. As Brown delivers this ball and that is popped into play straight to the second baseman and that'll end the bottom of the first. Lancers lead 2 1. Quick 
look at the scoreboard on the GPAC website. Hastings College leads Kansas Wesleyan 5 4 at the top of the seventh inning in baseball. Mount Marty's the only other game coming on right now, so it is nil nil here. Well, actually, that's what the website says. It's still 2 1. I don't know why I trusted the website. <laughs> so, ah, you're going to listen to me sometimes, but. Yeah, it's a quick moving storm is double rainbow out in center field. <laughs> nice sight to see on this. What was a beautiful Wednesday afternoon still is glass half full, right? It's always a good day if the Lancers are going to win. Hopefully they pull off two sweeps in two days. Stepping into the box for, well, let's just go do up for the Trojans. Quincy Hartley, shortstop. Jordan Jeffries, the second baseman. And Torrance Quellen, the third baseman. It's the delivery for Gronke as well the ball. Quick moving storm overhead. Very light precipitation. Inside, ball two. The coaches for Dakota Wesley and Aaron Skinner and assistant coach Corey Morgan at third base as that's popped into play. Third baser tries to scoop it up and she sends it forward and she'll reach base on the air. Megan Topovich at the air there. Ball was looked like a swinging bunt. Took a bounce off the turf. And Topovich tried to throw her glove at it and she just bumbled it up into the air. So no error there, but definitely a fielder a uh, base hit. Jordan Jeffries in the box for Dakota State. Umpire is called time. <laughs> the bunt attempt pulled in as that's called for a ball. Donkey's delivery. Ball. And she tries to bunt that again. It is 3 0 count to Jordan Jeffries. Sadly, one of the rainbows in center field has disappeared down. It's just one rainbow now. Thank you. Donkey's delivery. Bunt popped up. And that is caught by the third baseman, Toplovich. Ball is thrown to first base. And she is back in time. Now up to bat towards Clellan. Still looking for her first hit on the season. She went 0-2 last game. Delivery. Right down the middle. Called a ball though. Swung on and missed. That'll make it 1-1 one, one as catcher throws it back to first base. McNeese to Nihi and she is back on time. Delivery from Gronke. Called a ball. 2-1 now. A 
Bunt attempt up the left field line. 5 3, Topovich to Brooklyn Townsend, the second baseman. So actually a 5 4 play at first base. Brooklyn Townsend stepped in there for Nihi. playing left field. She fouls that back. 0-1. Ball. 1-1 one, one now. Swung on and missed. That'll make it 2 1. Scratch that. It'll make it one ball and two strikes. So flip that count. Swung on, sent to center field. That will fall into Autumn Porter's glove. I lied. That'll fall into Sammy Noble's glove. Normally, Autumn Porter would be playing there, but with all the changes the Lancers made for game two. Score is 2-1 Mount Marty after one and a half innings of play. Still out there pitching for Dakota State. It's Jada Brown. Needs a few warm up pitches. It's certainly gotten colder here since that storm blew through. Hopefully, after that quick moving storm and those rainbows, Lancers will keep the luck going and shut out. Of states and make it four shutouts in a row. Four run rule games in a row, I should say. All the way from Honolulu, Hawaii, up stepping into the box. Lily Noah Nihi now. The first baseman. Delivery. Rule the ball. Fouled off, 1-1. One, one. Delivery. Called a ball by the umpire. Two on the count. Wind has calmed down here finally after the storm blew through. Three balls, one strike now to count. Again, the coaches for the Lancers in game two, Caleb Ryan and Ramon Romero. Romero occupying the first base spot. Bryant occupying third as Lily Noaniki is blocked. Looks to be a pinch hitter for the Lancers now as Ella McNew steps into the box. Not a pinch runner, but a pinch, not a pinch hitter, but a pinch runner for the Lancers as Lily Noaniki is taken out of play for number 14, Ella Ray. 
a little bit of speed on first base for Mount Marty. Two up to bat after Ella McNew is Kayleen Jacinto. As that ball falls in for a strike. Fouled off, 0-2, oh, as that ball lightly clips the bat of McNew. No swing attempt there, but... It looked like it was gonna go wide for a ball until it lightly, as I said, lightly clipped off the bat. Delivery called a ball, 1-2 now. That ball, runner goes from first, makes it to second, safe off of the steal attempt. Pitch was ruled a ball as Ella Ray shows her speed and steals second. Two balls, two strikes. Wide, that'll be a ball. Ball, and that's a walk. Jada Brown walks another batter as the catcher comes to talk. Show some words of encouragement, maybe get back on track here. As I said, stepping into the box, Kaylee Nacinto, number 31. Other events going on right now around campus. Baseball Junior Varsity Squad is playing Northwestern College at Riverside Field at Bob, Ter Bob Tereshinsky Stadium at Riverside Field. That ball is sent down the right field line and that'll be fair. And that'll be at least one run scored for the Lancers. It's gonna be two runs at least because that ball went all the way to the fence. And that is two runs. That is a leadoff triple for Kaylee Nacinto. Scores now, 4-1 Mount Marty. Wish I could get some score updates for that JV baseball game, but fortunately no live stats there. What I can tell you right now, Lancers have Wait for those stats to update. That ball is set by Megan Topovich to right field for a single, and that brings in the Kayleen Jacinto across the line. Score is now 5-1 Mount Marty. MMU at bat, they only have two hits on the day as that's set to left field and cut. Yes, so far, Lancers only have two hits, but there's been two errors for Dakota State. Five runs scored, three in the second, one in the two in the first for the Lancers. One run is scored by Dakota State to start the first inning. That ball set up the middle of the center field. That'll be another base hit for the Lancers. One pitch, one hit for Elizabeth McGill. I like that walk-up music. It almost makes me pumped and hope she hits a home run. Keelan McNeese stepping into the box now. Some great walk-up songs for the Lancers this season. My favorite, of course, being Smells Like Teen Spirit. Can't tell you which Lancer has that walk-up song, but certainly my favorite of the, the bunch. Brown's release, called a ball. Runners on first and second, 2-0 count. Ball, three one the count now. Oh. 
Ball is called a strike, full count. Fouled off. Full count again for the Lancers. Lancer dugout screaming base hit or ball four. We shall see. That'll be ball four. The bases are loaded. One out on the inning. Potential for a grand slam here for, for the hometown hero, Brooklyn Townsend. Wind has calmed down now that the storm has blown through, so a grand slam here would be nice to see. Hopefully I can call it right. Yesterday I couldn't quite get it as that ball is hits. That'll be a run scored by the Lancers as the ball is bobbled in front of the catcher. It hits right up in front. Bounces up. Catcher tries to catch it. It goes over her head over to the backstop. And the runner from third base will score. Runners on second and third now. 1-0 the count. Delivery from Brown called a ball. Delivery. Ball three. Yeah, that wind has certainly calmed down. No grand slam potential here for Brooklyn Townsend, but home run would sure be nice. Delivery. That'll be a walk and the bases are loaded again. Sammy Noble now has the opportunity to hit a grand slam. You can tell what I really want to see here today. As I hope for the Lancers. Corey Morgan comes out to talk to the home plate umpire. And there's a quick meeting at the mound. No coach. There's a substitution now for Dakota State. Delaney Barrett is coming in to pitch for the Trojans now. She's replacing Jada Brown. Thought that number sounded familiar. Barrett pitched in game one. She was pulled halfway through. Gave up a lot of runs early. Is... But that's okay. She has a chance to redeem herself in game two. some pitching stats from her outing in game one while we wait for her to warm up. Again, the 8-0 shutout for Mount Marty in game one. As I heard a spectator say that we've had all three seasons in one during this game, which is certainly true. Sammy Noble stepped into the box as the first pitch is called a ball. Again, Barrett falls to 4-8 and eight on the season after last game's loss. 1.1 innings of work, four hits giving up seven runs, three walks. So hoping to redeem herself here in game two as there are runners on first, second, and third. Noble has a chance to hit a grand slam here. Two balls, one sh no strikes. Delivery called a ball. Now it is a 3 0 count. For Sammy Noble in this one. Right down the middle, that one is called a strike. Saves the run for the Lancers. Scoring. 3 1 the count now as Barrett looks to come in clutch after coming in as a 
as a reliever. Strike two. Claws it back from the 3-0 count to make it 3-2. Again, Barrett looking to be clutch here and at least force. Is that ball sent into right field? And that'll hit the that will be scooped up by the center fielder and two runs will score for the Lancers. Sammy Noble gets the two RBI double there. Score is now 8-1, Mount Marty. Lily Noaniki up to bat. All the way from Honolulu, Hawaii. As Barrett delivers the pitch, right down the middle, strike one. third base. Ella McNew steps into the box now for the Lancers. Ruled a first pitch strike for Barrett, looking to get back on track after that RBI two RBI double. One one the count now for the Lancers. Barrett slippery, swung on and fouled back. One two the count now. One ball, two strikes to count, two outs. Runners on second and third for the Lancers. Is that a set of ball? Wild pitch, but the runner from third stays put. Full count now, as McNeil looks to score a few more runs for the Lancers. If she gets the ball deep enough into right field, she might have an RBI double, as that is a ball. Now it's a full count. That is another walk for Dakota State. Now the bases are loaded. Up to bat now for Mount Marty. Pinch hitter for Mount Marty. Emma Bloom coming in to pinch hit for the Lancers. All the way from Rapid City, South Dakota. Bases are loaded. What a time for a grand slam this would be. As the wind has really calmed down now that the storm is blowing through in this already high-scoring game. First pitch is ruled a ball for Barrett. Delivery, set into left field, that might fall. False foul, just barely. Count will be 1-1 one, one now. Once again, a beautiful day here out at Saratoma Field now that the rain's passed. That'll go to shortstop, 6-3 play, and that'll end the inning. Heading to the top of the third, the Lancers lead 
You're listening to the Mount Marty Sports Network. I am Will, your commentator. We'll be right back. I should wear a hat more often when I'm doing this. I can hear the comments from everybody in the stands. Yeah. I've done this two days in a row now, and my voice is hoarse. <laughs> I feel like I finally hit my groove. Yeah. This is my fourth game in two days, and it's like, oh, now I'm speaking clearly. Yeah, I made a few mistakes, but yeah, I can just bounce back from them. I don't know. This is my like sixth game I've called now for Mount Marty. Nice. I'm just an intern here. For Derek? Yeah. Gotcha. Derek's. I'm Derek's lackey. <laughs> Needed an internship to graduate, and I had a previous in- kid from Wayne State come up here to intern, so I. Andy was like, oh yeah, we'd love to have you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you guys are always looking for help. Yep, yep. So, I kind of like doing this, I'm just not very good at it. Oh yeah. Welcome back to Mount Marty Sports Network. Stepping into the box after the 0-1 delivery by Gronke is... If she'll turn, kindly turn here. 23. Hannah McFarland finally got it for you, 2-1. Count now. As Gronky delivers the pitch, and that's popped up. Might be caught by the third baseman, and it is. Topovich with the grab there and quickly makes it one out on the inning. As Elizabeth McGill daps up Megan Topovich for that catch. Good play, says the shortstop. Right down the middle, that'll be a strike. Stepping into the box now is the right fielder grab, Gabrielle Ortega Alves. Put into play to the third baseman, Topovich, and that's Nihi with the grab. She's out. She bobbled that ball, but the umpire is called out on that play. It looked like she recovered in time. Stepping into the box is the pitcher from last game, Barrett. As that first delivery is called a ball. No one. Swung on. Count will be now one on one, actually. The one one. Called a ball. So Mount Marty. Sorry, needed to take a sip of water there. Gronky's delivery, fouled off. 3-2. Outs, inside. Ball three, full count. Barrett looks to get on base. Two balls, two strikes, two outs on the inning. At the top of the third. Delivery, swung on, and that'll end the inning. That'll end the top half of the inning. Looks like there might be some changes here for 
Dakota State. Don't know of any substitutions yet, but if I get any word from you, there is one. Didn't quite hear the umpire, but I'm sure I will report it to you when I hear it. Beautiful day now again at Saratoga Field. New pitcher on the mound for Dakota State, number one, Macy Bricker. On the season so far, no wins, nine losses, a 7.91 ERA. 16 appearances on the season for her with nine games started. And one complete game from her. Megan Topovich steps into the box for Mount Marty as Macy Bricker starts to pitch. Bricker's delivery. Swung on, sent to center field, and that's cut by the center fielder. Quickly 0-1 for the Lancers on the inning. Now up to bat, Adrian Scobie. Or Scooby, not quite sure. Scooby, I have the pronunciation sheet right here. Scooby, Adrian Scooby. All right, that first pitch is ruled a ball. Fouled off, 1-1. One, one. Wind has completely died down here. 7.20 the time. The ball swung on, popped to center field. That might be caught by the center fielder again. And that is two outs to center field. Elizabeth McGill now stepping into the box for the Lancers. The infielder from Thornton, Colorado. Barrett's delivery. Scratch that. Macy Bricker's delivery. Will they ball? Swung on, sent to shortstop. Six. Three play to end the bottom of the third for the Lancers. We're heading to the top of the four. A new pitcher on the mound for the Lancers. Hyen comes in to pitch. She played yesterday, making a relief appearance for the Lancers in their sweep of Hastings College. Pull up some pitching stats for you from yesterday's contest for Hayen. 
believe she pitched in game one. I'll get those stats to you once. Rowena Riggins steps into the box. First pitch is with the ball for Hayen. The 1-0. Make that 2-0 now. <laughs> she must have pitched in game two. As Mackenzie Gray got the win yesterday in game one. Delivery. Called a strike. 2-1 the count now. Hayden's pitch, fouled off. So JC Hayden came in to pitch to start the game. She gave up two hits and two walks, and, but she had two strikeouts and four innings of play. Hayen now. Swung on, fouled off. Out of play. As one of the Dakota State softball players goes and collects it. Brianna Riggins is, may have collected a hit in the last game. She's walked there. She takes her spot at first base. Time is called by the umpire as Corey Morgan goes to speak with the home plate umpire. to bat Delaney Granger and pinch running for the Trojans on first base is Cameron Peterson. Home plate umpire gets everything in order. And Hayden's now ready to pitch. Down the middle strike. Good delivery there from Hayen. Again, runner on first base. Ball high. Wings and misses as Runner tries to steal second. Tag out on the steal attempt. <laughs> Again, runner from first to second is tagged out on the steal attempt after the strikeout from Delaney Granger. Quickly, quickly makes it two outs on the inning. Now batting Quincy Hartley as that's popped up and out of play. 
Nobody's car is in danger this time. Haynes delivery. High. Ball two. Down the middle, strike. Hayen's looking confident on the mound so far as her relief effort is coming to fruition. Delivery, ball. Two, two now. Two balls, two strikes, two outs on the inning. Nobody on base for Mount Marty. That is sent into center field. That might be a double. That's a stand-up double for Quincy Hartley as that split the gap between left field and center field. Just over the head of the shortstop, Elizabeth McGill. Two outs still. Stepping into the box for Mount Marty, or, or for Dakota State, mind you, as that ball is, hits the turf and goes back to the backstop for a wild pitch. The runner from second advances to third. Stepping into the box for Dakota State. Jordan Jeffries. Popped up into foul ground. That is caught by Megan, Megan Toplovich. And that'll end the inning for Dakota State. Getting to the bottom of the fourth now. Mount Marty drew up to bat. I will get you that when we return. Mount Marty leads 8-1. Up music. It's gone. Huh? New pitcher on the mound for Dakota State. Actually, returning to the mound for Dakota State, Macy Bricker. Again, we cycled through all four seasons here at Saratoga Field in the last four hours. Now it's back to being a beautiful spring afternoon. Strike for Bricker. Sun is beginning to set here. So I'd say be safe to say it's the evening time now. Ball is fouled back. Quickly 0 and 2 now for McNeese. One two now the count. Delivery right down the middle strike. That's a strikeout for Bricker. as the infield comes in to give her high fives. Hey, 
she has 19 strikeouts on the season, so that's the second most on the team, actually. Make that 20 now. So that ball is put into play to the shortstop. 6-3. Sammy Noble comes up to bat. Her two RBI double earlier in the game helped extend the Lancer lead to 8 1. Delivery from Bricker. The ball. Looks like she's having fun out there on the mound. She flashes a smile with the catcher. Inside, called a strike, actually. 1-1 one, one the count now. Bricker's delivery, called a strike. 2-1 now. Sammy Noble sends that to the second baseman, and it's a 4-3 out to end the top of the fifth for the Trojans. I apologize for that. That ends the inning for Mount Marty. Got ahead of myself there as Hayen returns to the mound for the Lancers. Still 8-1 Mount Marty. Looking to maybe run roll this game too and make it four on the bounce. Great couple days for the Lancer softball program as they play College of St. Mary's at the weekend. Now batting for the Trojans, Torrance Clellan. Uh, as that first delivery from Hayen is rolled a ball. I will get you the Lancer schedule to read off for this weekend at the middle point of this inning. Ball two. Stepping into the box for Hastings College again is Allie Morrissey. Morrissey. Tongue twister there. That ball is sent wide. Ball one, runner on first base. Called a strike right down the middle. One one now. Haynes delivery. One to tap foul. One two the count now. Delivery, fouled off. 
it's starting to get a little chilly here as the sun goes down over at Saratoma Park. Hey, it's delivery. Set to the shortstop. 6-4. Not time for a double play, though, so just one out for the Lancers. Now batting for Dakota State. Number 23, Hannah McFarland. First pitch is ruled a ball for Hayen. <coughs> Set wide, ball two. Runner on first base for Dakota State. Ball is set into left field, gets down before the left fielder can get there and foul ground. Repeat, one, two count. Delivery from hand, fouled off. Catches that, throws it back to Hayden, and we will repeat the one two. Ball. Two two the count. Top of the fifth here for the Lancers. Up eight one at home as they look to close out a week of homestands, undefeated. Ball, full count now. Hayen looks to strike out the Dakota State batter here. Hannah McFarland. Literally swung on, caught by the shortstop. As the runner returns to first base. Tried to tag her out. Aaron Skinner, the head coach of the Dakota State Trojans giving some advice to the first base runner as he serves as first base coach. Delivery. Called a ball. Again, Lancers looking to run rule a fourth game in a row. As that ball is fouled and popped up and the catcher might get, no, she can't. Well, in the inning, eight one the score right now. Okay, I thought it might have been run ruled here. As the players seemed excited, but we're going to the bottom of the fifth. I don't know why I thought it'd be run ruled. It's Matt Marty hasn't batted yet, but well, that's okay. Like I said earlier in the broadcast, glass half full, not half empty here. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast so far. Matt Marty took game one. Looking to take game two as the Lancer dugout is trying to pump themselves up. <laughs> Kayla Bryant's telling them to sit her down. Never mind. Olivia Valdez is trying to pump up the crowd here. 
Now up to bat, all the way from Honolulu, Hawaii. Following her will be Ella McNew. I like the enthusiasm from the Lancer bench here. Lots to be excited about this week, though. Four wins on the trot if they hold on to this. Delivery called a strike. I meant to read off some of the events going on here. It's around the Lancer Athletics. After this, softball will travel to Morningside University for a doubleheader against the Mustangs. The women's and men's track and field teams will be at the Sioux City Relays in Sioux City, Iowa. Following their doubleheader against the Mustangs of Morningside. That ball is fouled off for Lily Noanihi. Following their double header against the Morningside Mustangs. Softball will take on College of St. Mary's in Omaha, Nebraska on Saturday. Baseball will be at Hastings College for a quadruple header, I'm sure, playing Saturday, Sunday. Also going on is that ball is set into play. Fourth, second baseman scoops it to third, or to first. That'll be a 4-3 play. Also up for... Ellen McNew stepping into the box now to spot for the Lancers. Again, finishing out the schedule for the week. Men's and women's track and field will also be at the South Dakota Challenge again at USD as that ball is set foul past the net. Look out. Tennis will also be in Yankton, South Dakota taking on Hastings College and GPAC play as that's fouled off. Cut by the catcher. We will see another pitch. Yes, on Sunday, softball JV takes on Dakota Wesleyan at Mitchell, South Dakota for a double header. And baseball will finish off their quadruple header against Hastings College. That's sent right back to the pitcher. One, three. Two outs on the inning now. As Emma Bloom comes to bat for Mount Marty. Fouled off. Yes, as the sun is going down here at Saratoma Park, it is getting downright chilly. Wind's picking up a little bit again as that's sent high for ball one. One one now. I believe this series was rescheduled from earlier in the season. It is a North Star Athletic Association showdown against the GPAC. Not too many of those left as next year the NSAA will be dissolving. The University of Jamestown will be departing the GPAC as they voted, as the members of the GPAC voted, and they will take part in the last season of the North Star Athletic Association before moving to the NSIC of Division II. That is a strikeout. Ends the inning for the Lancers. Top of the sixth loading. You're listening to Mount Marty Sports Network.
as every other pitcher has done today. Macy Bricker will now come up to bat as she bunts and pops that up and foul just barely as Kaylee McNeese tries to make a play on that. Bunt attempt again, but that is ruled a ball. One one now. <laughs> Delivery. Bunt. That is fair. It might it will go foul though. It looked like it might have stayed fair, but it took a couple bobbles off the turf and went foul. Turf's been tricky today. It's been difficult to lay down some months for everybody. Haynes delivery. Roll the ball. 2-2 two, two now. Called a strike, that's a strikeout for Hayden. Stepping into the box, Rowanna Riggins. Livery, putting the play to the first base and that's an easy put out. Had to walk two feet for that one. Now to bat Delaney Granger for the Trojans. See the umpires shaking in the wind a little bit over there, and it's getting chilly. I I'm also a little cold here, so. One won the count. As Corey Morgan, the third base coach for Dakota State, gives words of encouragement to the batter. That's set in the center field on a liner. Caught. Caught by Sammy Noble. <laughs> that was on a line to Sammy Noble. What a play. Game continues on here. Mount Marty leads 8-1. Bottom of the sixth now. Still not sure of the rules. And whether this would end in a run rule after this inning or not, but we got one more. Thank you to the man in the stands for helping me out here. We're for sure going to play one more. As a Macy Bricker continues to pitch for Dakota State. <coughs> Lancers are looking to sweep two series in a row. Megan Topovich coming into bat now for Mount Marty. I will take a look at your record to see how much of a win streak they're on right now. Barring a 
miraculous turnaround for Dakota State should be four wins in a row at least for Mount Marty as that is fouled off. Yeah, I should get down. That's a base hit for Toplovich. Yes, right now Mount Marty's riding a three-game win streak after they lost last week to Briar Cliff 4-0. They split in that series 6-3 the first game they've won. Delivery from Bricker. Popped in the center field. It should be caught by the center fielder who made the long trek. Caught. Two outs now. Lancers are hoping to fuel, use this run of wins to fuel their season. And maybe make a run for the GPAC title come May. Just like they did a few years ago. One attempt foul. Floodlights are now on here at Saratoma Park. As the sun is setting in Yankton, South Dakota. You're watching Mount Marty Sports Network. Elizabeth McGill in the box. Topovich on first. Bricker's delivery swung on and missed by McGill. 0-2. That ball is fouled off. Hits a couple branches. And Delivery from Bricker, sent to the shortstop. Six, she's called out at first base, 6-3. She almost beat the throw. Again, McNeese's walk-up music plays and I love it. I don't know what song it is, but it's just got a bad, like a, has a vibe to it, like she's gonna crush one to center field. First pitch to McNeese. Swung on and missed. I've commented on that walk-up song three times and I really hope that she knocks one out of the park here at least once today. Caught a strike, 0-2 now. Really hoping I haven't cursed McNeese here because just like yesterday, anytime I would call a home run, it would be a double, and anytime I called a double, it'd be a home run. So that is a ball. Runner on second base. Maybe if I say a double prematurely, she'll knock it out of the park. As a couple fans were laughing with me yesterday as that kept happening to me. Delivery swung on and missed, and that'll be a strikeout for Bricker. Heading to the top of the seventh. Mount Marty leads 8 1 still. Every time I say I hope McNeese takes a home run, she doesn't do the home run. Huh. I felt the change coming there. And... Yeah. Welcome back to Mount Marty Sports Network. Hey, 
Houston out here to pitch the seventh and close the game for Mount Martin. Still lead 8-1. Up to bat now for the Trojans. Number six. Quincy Hartman. She had a double earlier in the game. Delivery. Yes, I believe she had a double at the end, beginning of the game, and made it to the third base off of an error. <clears throat> Hayes' delivery popped up, foul out of play, caught by the, attempted to be caught by the, one of the spectators over by the Dakota State bench. He almost had that ball. Too bad it wobbled out of his hand. Would have been a nice grab. To the 1-1, one, one, back to the pitcher. 1-3, out for Mount Marty. Two outs left in the game for Dakota State. Now to bat Jordan Jeffries. First delivery for Payton is called a strike. Popped up foul. Heading to some cars, but it'll won't get there. Sometimes I get a little worried that a pop-up foul is gonna hit my car, but I parked far away for that reason. <laughs> One, two, the count now after Hayden's delivery is deemed a ball. Delivery, ball, two, two. Popped up. Third baseman calls it and she catches it. And the Trojans are down to their last out. Mount Marty leads 8 1 still. Delivery right down the middle, but it is called a ball. Just inside. The 1 0 from Hayen called strike. 1 1 now. Hayen's delivery swung on, popped up, and that might be the last out of the game. And she catches it. Lancers win 8 1. Dakota State falls to 5 and 22 now. Mount Marty improves to 14 and 16 on the season. As I said earlier in the broadcast, their next game will be against Morningside in a doubleheader Friday before they head Saturday to College of St. Mary's to take on the Flames. Quick rundown of the live stats before I let you guys go. Mount Marty scored eight runs, had five hits and two errors. Dakota State had one run, one hit, one error scored in the whole game. All of the runs came in the first two innings with Mount Marty scoring two in the first, six in the second. Dakota State scored one in the first. Thank you again for joining us at Saratoma Park. Hope you had a wonderful day. My name's been Will, and I am signing off. <laughs>